So I want to go over real quickly today, power stropping, right? Not too long ago, I had a video out on uh, how to convert a bench grinder into a power strop by adding a leather wheel and a cloth buffing wheel. Now that works fantastic. And I recently did a video on regular stropping with a piece of leather on a uh, substrate, right? A piece of wood. Now that's fantastic. And you can strop like that for the rest of your carving career and you'll be just fine. You will not have an issue. It is fantastic. It is always going to work. It's not going to have a problem. But I'm lazy. And if I am not a good boy and I forget to strop or I don't strop as often as I should, it might take me longer to strop a knife back up to carving condition. And I don't like to spend all that time because the hobby I enjoy most is carving, right? I told you that that, that stropping is like a, a companion hobby to, to carving, right? And it absolutely is. But it's not the hobby I enjoy most. I enjoy making things out of wood. So I want to give back to making things out of wood. I don't want to spend my time stropping and honing my blades and sharpening them and getting them in the correct shape to carve with. I have to do that. That's a requirement of my hobby, right? But power stropping is more expensive. You shouldn't do this. You don't need to do this. But if you're lazy and you're willing to invest, getting a bench grinder, converting it over to power strop is absolutely something you can do. So whenever I'm carving, I can... Oh, my knife is dull. I can simply turn around over to this and take 20 to 30 seconds to get a knife back into carving condition and then go right back to the carving I was doing and not have any issues. That's what I'm going to show you guys today, how I do that with a gouge, a V-tool, and some knives. And we'll go over real quickly what I do in each wheel, how I use it. And that's it. Nice and simple. All right. This is my old bench grinder that I converted to a power strop. It is rotating up and away from me along the top. I'm going to use flex cut gold and I'm going to apply it to my leather stropping side and it burns through stropping compound much more quickly than uh, stropping on a leather strop by hand. So this is going to use up a lot more stropping compound and I put a little bit too much on there, but that's okay. <clears throat> Be mindful of safety here. Okay. Think about this. Be purposeful with every movement that you do on a strop. To start with, I'm going to use this number three KCT. It's got a small bevel there at the end, and I'm going to start stropping that. And you're going to see this strop turn black quickly as it pulls off material. This thing heats up quick. You don't need much to get it done. You can check it out fast, barely putting any pressure on there, and it strops quick. And we go right over here to the buffing wheel to clean up that stropping compound. A little bit left on the edge there. We're just going to press that in there. And that buffing wheel will take off all the stropping compound and clean that up nice and pretty. And it is sharper than the Dickens. Now, this thing gets warm. This stropping wheel is moving really quickly. And you need to be mindful of that. Don't put your thumb on a blade and then press it in there because you will burn your thumb. Now, with it getting that hot that quickly, you have to be mindful of the temper. When a blade is forged, it is soft steel. And then it is heated up and tempered in oil. So it's quenched and cooled down rather quickly. And doing that hardens the steel so it can hold an edge. If you use this improperly, you could easily soften your blade enough by heating it up and letting it cool down slowly that it loses that temper. So you don't want to do that. So you're not looking to do much on this. You're going to get it on there and get it off real quick. Next up is a number 15 Swiss made file gouge. This is a V tool that I use. We got two cutting edges here to strop one side and then the other. And you don't need much more than this. That little rounded V part there on the end. Do that as well. And then over to the buffing wheel to just clean it up, clean that compound off and get inside of that V so we get the burr off that's created by the stropping wheel. And that's it. Now we're just polishing it, making it look pretty. And you can feel it is very sharp right away, really quickly. So we're going to get another tool out. We're going to get this number seven gouge. It's a file tool, Swiss made also. Take a good look in the bevel on your tool before you do so. And then place it flat against that bevel. And then rotate it nice and gently. And that is it. It does not take much. Back over to the buffing wheel to clean off that compound and then flip it upside down to take off that burr. And this thing is going to be sharper than the Dickens as well. It does not take much to do these on a power strop. You might have spent 20 minutes stropping on a leather strop mounted to wood, but this is much quicker. 
Now this is a flex cut knife. This is a different kind of bevel. You can see it's flat and then it comes down at a sharp angle in there. So I'm just gonna put it over here and I'm not gonna touch the blade because the blade's gonna get hot rather quick. And I just keep that bevel against the leather and slide it across. Now I'm gonna do the other side. Now the, now the sharp edge of the blade is trailing. So the sharp edge of the blade is facing upward because this bench grinder has been modified. The wheel is spinning upwards around the top and over away from me along the top. If you have a bench grinder and you have not modified it to spin away from you like mine is, then it will be spinning in the opposite direction and you need to be very mindful of what you're doing because it's probably going to hurt you. If you put the knife blade up here in the wrong direction, it will grab a hold because it will cut into the leather or the cloth and it will catch and then that knife will get thrown and you will get yourself hurt. You can see that uh, buffing wheel really puts a polish on that knife blade real quickly. <laughs> now I got some other knives to do, and these are just the knives that need to be stropped that I had. So this is my Beckwith Forge knife, and it's a rough out knife. And not touching the blade, blades on the trailing edge of the leather. I just work it across it real quick. Not much. That bevel right down on there. I'm touching the end of that blade for a moment not where the leather meets it because it gets warm quickly. And we go over here to the buffing wheel and clean that profile up both sides so we can make sure we get that burr. Obviously this thing has been rotating on me. Just real quick. Polish up. That buffing wheel is cleaning off that compound and removing that burr. You'll notice I have this inside the house but I have this uh, power strop inside of a shelf here now the reason is because the back of the shelf and the uh underside of the top here above this bench grinder is absolutely filthy with stropping compound because these spinning wheels throw that stropping compound out and away and it makes a mess of anything nearby so i have it pushed inside of the shelf to keep it contained be mindful of that when you go to places somewhere know that the area immediately around it is going to be a bit of a mess because of the stropping compound getting thrown off of these spinning wheels. This is the last blade I have to clean, to strop, and it gets hot real quick. Just keep that in mind. Don't be putting your finger on the blade. And uh, remember, this is a spinning object. You could easily grab that knife and throw it away from you. So hold on to it well. Okay, then when you get back over to the table, you check these things out, you know, how well does this thing carve now that I honed it. Man, I love this V-Tool, I really do. This is number 15 Swiss made file and it is just really nice. It makes these really clean lines and you can curve it like this and it just doesn't tear just makes really neat lines and like that little jitter right there that's me that's not the tool <laughs> and that's something i love about it too anything that's wrong with it is usually up to the user and not the tool but look at that that's fantastic so that one's worked good what this larger one you know like this one i do usually use like this and i use it to scrape off a lot of wood off of flat areas like if i want to get rid of saw marks i'll do this number right here and just take all these saw marks off the back of a piece or something like that you know and it works great for that that's like the purpose tool and then uh let's check out this helvy fantastic absolutely fantastic let's check out this little gouge, and this little guy is doing good too. Yeah. And what about our flex cut? How's it doing? Flex cuts are great knives. They really are. Anyone who says they're not is just giving them a bad rap for no reason. All right, my Beckwith Forge rough out knife. That's great. Lastly, my Beckwith Forge detail knife. 
Yeah. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite knives these days. It really is. That's fantastic. So these knives are all doing great. I'm easily making chips, and you can see they're all properly stropped as needed. With anything in life, your safety is the first concern. It should be your first concern, but often we forget about things. We don't think about things. We think about others' safety before our own, right? We don't take our own safety seriously. So take a moment here and listen to my words. Be mindful about what you're doing. This is a, a powerful machine, and that stropping wheel and that buffing wheel are operating very quickly, rotating and rotating. And if they grab that knife because you hold the blade in the wrong direction, it's going to jerk it out of your hand and throw it. Now, if it's spinning up and away from you, it's likely not going to injure you, but there's still a very sizable chance that it will. You should absolutely be wearing safety glasses at the very least, but every time you get near this thing and turn it on, be mindful of what you're doing. Think about a reaction before you do it and ensure that you're being safe. All right. Now, I hope this video helped somebody out. I hope it uh, is is educational to you at the very least and uh, if it is go ahead and like the video subscribe to the channel and then uh, before you leave don't forget to click one of these buttons right here keep watching stuff on the channel because that really helps me so click this one here or this one here either one and uh i'll see you next time